Okay, we are doing chapter the uh, answers or the solutions to chapter 13 now. We wanted to simplify 0 0.392 and so on, and we wanted to start with the parentheses, so we get 0.3 cubed, which is 0 0.027, minus 0 0.0016, which is supposed to be 0 0.0254. So we've got one number in the middle here, and then that's uh, my next P goes from the opening bracket to the closing bracket. And inside, do I have any exponents? No. Any multiplication or division from left to right, there's a multiplication here. That's supposed to give you 1.0524. And we still have this subtraction, this subtraction. The next step is this subtraction, which is supposed to leave you with 0.6524, and then subtract another 6.524, that should give you a zero. And you're just left with 0.392. Do you agree with that? Did you get that number? Or where do we disagree, and who is right? Okay, I'll let you look at this for a few seconds. Then we had an auditorium with 25 rows and 30 seats per row, and the state collected $2.09 per seat. So how many seats do we have? 25 times 30, which is supposed to be 750. And uh, we wanted to multiply that by $2.09 which is supposed to give me, now you don't need that row of zeros, you can bring the third row up to the second row. It's supposed to give me 156750. Now there's a decimal point here, so I go back two places, and I get $1,567.50. I'll let you look at that, see if you agree with those numbers. Then I show you the same thing again with the zeros, the middle zeros removed. Then we wanted to buy 22 boxes of Hershey's at $8.50 per box. The total for the Hershey should be $187. And the, the uh, dark chocolates, we have 10 boxes at $18.25. $182.50, and when you add the two, you're supposed to get $369.50. Do we agree with that? Then I wanted the area of this uh, L-shaped region, so I want to find x, which is going to be 4.1 minus 3.2 or 0.8. I wanted to find y, which is 4.0 minus 0.9 or 2.1. And then I guess I got my two measures here. And uh, if the corners were cut out, I would get 4.1 times 4.0, 4.1 times 4.0, which is without the cut, and with the cut, I have to remove um, 3.1 by 0.9, which is 2.79. And then when I remove the area that is cut out from the original rectangle, I am supposed to be left with 16.4 minus 2.79, or 13.61 square yards. Now there's an alternate solution, there's more than one. You can do it another way and get the same answer, I hope. You can multiply 4.0 by 3.2, 
and 0.9 by 0.9. So you can cut this into, I guess you can either put the bar here or the bar here. I think I put it here. 4.0 times 3.2 and then what was this? Uh, 0.9 times 0.9. Okay. Then we wanted the product of 0 0.5371 seven one oh nine by one thousand. Multiplying by one thousand makes it larger. So that should be five hundred thirty seven point one oh nine. So five hundred thirty seven and one hundred nine ten hundred thousands. Okay I'm back. Now we want to do the solutions to exercises in chapter fourteen. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 2.6 by 7. I don't have a decimal in the divisor, so that's okay. The decimal point is moved up in the same position. How often does 7 go into 2? It doesn't. Into, 20, into 26, 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21. Subtract, you get a 5. Take down the next digit, that's a 0. 7 goes into... Uh, um, 57 times, that's 49. You get a remainder of 1. Take down the next digit, that's a 10. 7 goes into 10 once. That's about this 0. And uh, you subtract, you're left with a 3. And keep on proceeding and so on. I think I wanted to round to the nearest thousands. Therefore, I stopped right here. I needed to know if this digit was five or more. It isn't. So when I round to the nearest thousands, that should be 0 0.371 or 371 thousands. Okay. 371 thousands. Do you want to look at this uh, in more detail for a little while? Maybe you do not agree with something I have here. exercise, we wanted to divide 140.273 by 0 0.0406. So I need to make this a whole number by multiplying by 10,000, moving the decimal point four places to the right. Now I'm dividing 1,402,730 by 406. So first, how often does 406 go into 140? It doesn't. Into 1,402, 1,402, I say three times. Three times 406 should be 1,218, which I subtract, and I'm left with 184. Take down the next digit. That's the first step. I'll reproduce this, and I'll go on. You may want to copy this for a little while or check your answers. I have that 3 here. I have the same number here. I have this from previously, so we had 1,844. We took down the 7. The 406 apparently goes 4 times. 4 times 406 is 1,624 which I subtract from 1,847. My remainder is 223. Take down the next digit and continue. I've reproduced that. <coughs> so we were up to about here. Take down the next digit, that's a 3. How often does 406 go into 2,200? Apparently, 5 times. 
which gives me 2030, I subtract. I am left with a zero, and uh, in 30 it goes five times. And what did I want to round to? Did I want to make it the nearest thousand? Well, that's kind of immaterial, because my answer seems to be there's no decimal. I stopped at the decimal. As a matter of fact, there is no remainder here. So my answer looks like 3,455. How can you check that? What do you get when you multiply 3,455 with 406? You should get 1,402,730. Again, let's, let me know if we agree with that. All right. Then we wanted to divide 2.235 by 4.5, move the decimal point two places to make that 45. I came up with, um, the decimal point is reproduced, 45 doesn't go into 22. 45 goes into 223 about four times, that's 180. Subtract, you get 43. Take down the next digit, five. Which gives me 435. How often does 45 go into 405? About nine times, which should be 405. Subtract, you're left with 30. Take down the next digit, which is zero. 45 goes into 300 about six times. Six times 45 apparently is 270. Subtract, you get 30. And you have the 30, you get 30 again. Apparently, you keep on getting 30s. Okay, you may want to check this. I'll leave it up for a little while. So 0.496666. And uh, you can write the six with a bar. That means infinitely many sixes. Or you can round it to whatever place you desire. And then we wanted to divide 7.525 by 1,750. We produce a decimal point. How often does 1,700 go to 7 a dozen? 75 a dozen, make sure you have a zero here. 5, 700, it doesn't, make sure you have a zero here. 7,525, four times, that's about 7,000. Your remainder is 525. How often, you take down the next digit, a zero. How often does 1,750 go into 5,250? apparently three times, and that seems to be exact, and there's no remainder. You want to check this out? Then you wanted to evaluate a squared plus 3b squared over 10a minus 30b, when a is 2.4 and b is 0 0.8. So you're supposed to get 1.44 plus uh, 3 times 0 0.64 over 24 minus 24. The denominator is 0. That's the end of it. I don't care what's in the numerator. The denominator is zero, this fraction is undefined. Zero in the denominator gets you into trouble. If you have a computer program and somewhere on there it divides by zero, the program doesn't know what to do. Either it will stop and quit, or it will keep on going and going and going, and you'll have to find a way of stopping it. So you want to make sure that never happens in a computer program. Now we have a similar problem. 
And uh, we have a minus 30b over 100a squared plus 3b squared. The numerator is 24 minus 24. The denominator is not 0. 0 over any number is 0. That's OK. 0 in the numerator is OK as far as math is concerned. Maybe not if you can't do anything with 0. But at least it doesn't get you into trouble like an infinite loop in the program. When you divide by 100,000, the number gets smaller. You move back one, two, three, four, five decimal places. One, two, and three more. One, two, and one, two, three more, a total of five. So you get 0 0.0001.6324. How would you write that? 16,324, and then the units, 10,000, 100,000, million, 10 million, 100 millions with a TH. And that's it for these exercises. Okay, we do chapter 15 now, Introduction to Basic Algebra. We are going to cover the following sections in our textbook. Chapter 4, Section 1, Introduction to Basic Algebra. 4.2, Solving Addition and Subtraction Equations. 4.3, Solving Multiplication and Division Equations. So we'll start with the basics. Here is a statement attributed to Bertrand Russell that might be of interest to you as far as reading is concerned. Mathematics may be defined as a subject in which we never know what we are talking about, nor whether we are saying is true. And if you want to read more about that, I told you where it came from on the internet. So if you have access to the internet, put this in and uh, see what happens. I'm not going to waste time making you copy that. The statement applies to algebra. Algebra uses locked boxes to manipulate data. Locked boxes? The object is for you to unlock these boxes, and we will say solve, so solve an equation, in the statements containing those boxes. For instance, can you find the number in the following box? Five colleagues go to lunch together. The bill, the total bill is $20.45. The bill is split evenly amongst the colleagues. How much did each one have to pay? How much money is in each box if there are five boxes just like that one? As a solution, divide $20.45 by 4 to obtain your answer. One of the worst mistakes you can make is to dismiss algebra because you can find the answer to this example, for instance, by proper reasoning. Okay. The idea in the word problems that we are giving you, the simple word problems, is not for you to find the answer by reasoning, but to develop an algebraic technique so that you can use the same technique in more difficult problems. How could you have solved your answer? Or how would you solve the following? You are given two times a number in the box, a number square, so the number in the box times the same number in the box, plus five times the number in the box plus five. Could you do that by reasoning? Not likely. So hopefully we'll develop a formula that can handle that. How about the following? To estimate the height of a bridge across the river, you drop a rock from the bridge. Your partner records the time with a stopwatch. About 4.5 seconds later, the rock hits the river, and you need to determine what is the height of the bridge. Well, how the heck can we do that? Somebody tells you that the formula is negative 16.714 times 4.5. Okay, that's the formula for the height. And this is the time. 4.5 seconds, plus what is in the box, that's the height in the box, which is equal to zero. And in order to find that again, we develop a formula. Another example where you have numbers in the box. You have five times the number in the box squared, minus three times the quantity, seven minus the box, 
plus the box which is zero. There are many factors involved in practical applications. For instance, you want to shoot a satellite into orbit. How far above the Earth is it? How fast does it travel? What temperature and pressure does it have to take into account? All that can be handled by equations, by algebra, and by getting techniques to solve algebraic equations. So trying to solve the problems we are giving you that you're supposed to be able to, to uh, solve mathematically, not by reasoning and then, aha, I got the answer. You have the answer, but you don't have the technique to get the answer algebraically. To find the symbol in the box, find the symbol of this box in your keyboard. You don't have it on your keyboard, okay? So what can you use? It is not there. Go to the electronic store and buy the right keyboard. The store should be amused. You come in and you ask for a keyboard that has a rectangle with a question mark on it. Question mark, you have a key, but a rectangle with a question mark. They don't make that kind of keyboard. Well then, instead, well, let's find a workaround. Instead of using a box with a question mark, let's use a letter. Let A be that letter. It could be A, it could be H, it could be X. Traditionally, it is called X. If we want the height, we might call it H. And uh, the height of the bridge, for instance, in the bridge problem. And um, the number in the box, the number we can replace x by in the x box, call that the x box, can be any real number. The number can vary. You can put in a 1, a 2, a negative 7, a pi, a square root of 3. So we call this a variable. This is replaced by the letter x, right here. And uh, this is the x box, it's a variable. So x is a variable. You can replace x by any number. Maybe not the number that you want to make this a true statement, but in general, any number. So four times, five times the box square minus three times the quantity seven minus the box plus the box is now written five x square minus three times the quantity seven minus x plus x, which is zero. In the example with the five colleagues that went to lunch, let P stand for the symbol uh, of the box that contains the portion of the $20.45 that each of the colleagues must pay. So five times the number in that box must be 20.45. The first step we must take to translate written English into mathematical states, statements and symbols you want to take this translation very seriously. Almost no employer will give you an equation like the statement above containing the equal sign and ask you to solve it. Uh, if somebody hires you with those qualifications, you will be on the lower uh, rank of the pay scale. Somebody else will develop an equation and you're just asked to solve it. Should I say you might be able to train a monkey at the zoo to perform certain equations? I'm not calling anybody a zoo, I'm just trying to make a point. Okay, that's what I'm saying here. A collection of variables, letters, operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, parentheses and so on. So any mathematical symbol almost but not an equal sign, not a greater than or less than, is called an expression. A mathematical statement that contains an equal sign is called an equation. Statement translations. A number plus seven is 25. What can I translate first? A number, replace that by the X box, we'll say just X, so x plus 7 is 25. x plus 7 is 25. What do you, read, what do you use, uh, say next? You could say equal for is. You could write 25, 25. You could say plus 7, 
apparently I've done plus seven, so the next statement is x plus seven, x plus the, the numeral seven, and then is and 25. You just translated this statement, a number plus seven is 25, into mathematical symbols. And an equation, the is means is equal to, is the same as. Another statement, the sum of twice a number and 23. Keyword, a number, make that x. Sum means add, the addition sign is under the and. And between the and and the sum you have twice the number, that means 2x. And on the other side you have 93. So step by step, replace the number by x. Work with twice x. Work with the sum, the sum of 2x. This is the sum of 2x and 93, so 2x and 93, 2x plus 93. Here the and stands for addition. The and is not always addition. The quotient of uh, 10 and 5, and 5, refers to division because quotient means division. Now, notice that here we have the sum of twice a number, twice a number, whereas over here we have twice the sum. That is quite different. <coughs> so doing this step by step, we have a number, we place that by x. We have the sum of the number and, under the and you put the plus sign. 61, you can write 61, or 60, why do I say 61? Yeah, I did say 61. Why is that 63? This is a misprint, this should be 61. And uh, all this is the sum. You wanted twice the sum, not twice the number, so twice all of this. 2 times x plus 63, or 60, in parentheses. Up here, where it was just twice the number, it was 2x. Here, it is 2 times the quantity x plus 63, because it's 2 times the sum. So I said 61 here, I say 63 here. It's supposed to be the same number. Send me an email and I can fix it. In number four, we wanted to translate four more than the quotient of a number and six less than that number. Well, I start out by replacing a number, this number and that number by x. right here, x and, uh, and x, here x and x. The next statement, I want to refer to a quotient. The quotient means division. I, am, I have four more than, I don't handle that yet. The quotient of x and x minus 6, because that was 6 less than x. 6 less than x. So the quotient of these two, that's x divided by the quantity x minus 6, or you can make it a fraction, x divided by x minus 6, and then you wanted 4 more than that quotient, 4 more than that quotient, 4 more than that quotient, and uh, I think that's it. So step by step develop this. Write the whole statement and uh, replace one or two or three words by a symbol, one word at a time. Okay, you need time to look at that. Now, what about the difference between nine and the number is equal to the product of three and the number? Ooh! Replace the number by x. That makes your statement a little bit smaller. x here, x here. Difference means you subtract. Where's the minus sign under the and? What is between the and and the difference? Just the 9. So you have 9 minus something, 9 minus x. Is equal to, that's an equal sign now. So the difference first. First replace a number. There is a 
there is 9 minus the number, this is equal to 3 times the number, and uh, is equal to, this quantity is equal to that quantity too, so 9 minus x is 3x. It looks like I skipped uh, some points. Replace this by x, replace that by x. Get the difference of 9 and the number. You have this translation. And then is equal to product. Product means multiplication. So the multiplication sign is under the and. Between and and product, you have 3. After the and, you just have the number, which is x. So product of 3 and the number is 3x. And there it is. X mi 9 minus x is 3x. If you do it step by step, you, word by word, you're going to get it. If you read the whole sentence and get confused, that's the end of it. You'll remain confused. 9 subtracted from a number is equal to the product of 3 and the number. The number is x subtracted from, you start with a from number, so x minus 9, 9 is subtracted from a number, 9, 9 is subtracted from a number, so x minus 9 is equal to, product means multiplication, 3 and x, 3 times x. Okay. Notice the reversal in the statement's difference between, which is 9 minus x, first number minus second number, and 9 subtracted from x. You start with a from number, and from that number, you subtract 9. So 9 minus x here, x minus 9 here. First number minus second number, second number minus first number. Oh, we have some more examples. The price of a dozen eggs is reduced by one-tenth of that number. The price is reduced by, reduced by means you do subtraction. Let P be the reduced price, which is uh, reduced by one-tenth. So you need the price and you need one-tenth of the price. This is one-tenth of the price. This number reduced by that number means P minus one over 10P which is really 1 over 9p. Well, we have more examples. You pay $25 for every $100 of the $4,000 that you borrow for one year. In one year, you pay $25 out of each, so per every, per every $100. And uh, that is to be multiplied by what you borrowed, the 4,000. That gives you 25 of 100 times 4,000. That goes in here. Oh, I didn't give you the answer. That 100 goes in here, that's 40. And 40 times 25 is uh, what, uh, 100? 1,000? No. That's 40. 4 times 25 is 100, times 10, 1,000. So you would pay $1,000. And then you want to evaluate an expression. Evaluate means find the value. An expression is a collection of mathematical symbols, but not an equal sign, greater than or less than sign. Now that we know how to get expressions, we can evaluate them. What is a plus b minus c if a is 6, b is 7, and c is negative 8? In the a box, you have a 6. In the a box, you have a 6. In the b box, you have a 7. And in the c box, you have a negative 8. And if I've done correctly, the answer is 21. <coughs> so 6 plus 7 minus negative 8, which is plus 8, is 21. Another evaluation, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared over x minus y. x is 2, y is negative 5. So a number squared, 2 times a number times a number plus a number squared. 
a number minus a number. X goes in here, so two here, two here, and two here. I mean here. And uh, five here, here, and here. So the numerator is four minus negative 20 plus 25. That minus should, no, that's fine. I'm looking at the denominator. So the denominator is two plus five, two plus five. The numerator is four plus 20 plus 25, which gives you 49 over seven, or just plain seven. You want to look at that for a moment? Okay, I have a class coming up in about half an hour. We buy B pounds of bananas at $1.29 each. That's an expensive banana. And uh, C pounds of chicken at $3.59 per pound. And G gallons of milk, which costs $4.79 per gallon. Set up an expression for the cost of the purchase. If you buy two pounds of bananas, it's two times that number. If you buy B pounds, it's B times that number. Whatever number is in the B box and you multiply 3.59 by C for chicken, and you buy G gallons, G for gallon, uh, per uh, $4.79 pounds for one. So the solution is what I just said, 1.29B plus 3.59C plus 4.79G. You can plug in the number you give, you, you want to buy for pounds here for pounds of chicken and for gallons of milk. If, if you buy 5.2 pounds of bananas, 5.2 goes in here. If you buy 2.5 pounds of chicken, 2.5 goes in here. This is just an estimate down here. And if you buy uh, two gallons of milk, two goes in here. So this is approximately 1.3 times 5. This is approximately 3.3, approximately 3. I rounded off to 3. Just an estimate, a quick estimate. Doesn't have to be exact. And C apparently was something close to 3. So I made this smaller and I made that larger to compensate. And this is about uh, 2 times 5. 2 gallons at about $5 per gallon. So the total is in the neighborhood of $26. And the exact value, when we plug in exactly 5.2, exactly 2.5, exactly 2, gives me 25.183. Are the numbers close? My estimate was 26. My real number is 25.183. It is very close. Okay? It's just an estimate. If you had estimated 24 or 27, that would still be close enough so that this is probably correct. Different estimates come out with different numbers. And all the numbers may be correct. All the estimates may be correct. Let me give you some exercises to work with. Translate 20 more than the number is 59. 20 more than a number is 59. The second exercise, the difference between twice a number and 93, the difference between twice a number and 93. Exercise three, twice the difference between a number and 93. Twice the difference between a number and 93. Exercise four. 
seven more than the product of a number and eight less than the number. Seven more than the product of a number and eight less than the number. Seven more than the product of a number and eight less than the number. Exercise five. The sum of ten and the number is equal to the quotient of five and the number. The sum of ten and the number is equal to the quotient of five and the number. Exercise 6. 11 subtracted from twice a number. 11 subtracted from twice a number is equal to the sum of 3 and the number. 11 subtracted from twice a number is equal to the sum of 3 and the number. Exercise 7. The price of a bicycle is reduced by one twelfth of that price. The price of a bicycle is reduced by one twelfth of that price. Example 8. You pay $16 for every $100 of the $6,000 you borrow for one year, how much do you pay in one year? Then evaluate 2A plus B minus 3C, 2A plus B minus 3C. If A is 6, B is 7, C is negative 8. So 2A plus B minus 3C, a is 6, B is 7, C is negative 8. Evaluate x squared minus 2x plus y squared. That's the numerator, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. Over, so a fraction bar, and then in the denominator you have x plus y. If x is 2 and y is negative 6, x squared minus 2xy plus y squared over 3x plus y. x is 2, y is negative 6. Your spouse buys D pounds of dates at $4.29 each. E cartons of eggs at $3.19 per carton and F pounds of figs which cost $9.39 per pound. So dates at 429, E at 319, and F at 8.39. Set up an expression for the cost of the purchase, of course using D, E, and F, and then estimate, okay, estimate. And after you estimate, evaluate the exact cost of the purchase of 2.5 pounds of dates, 3 cartons of eggs, and 1 pound of figs. So 2.5 pounds for dates, 3 cartons of eggs, and 1 pound of figs. And that's it for the first set of exercises. I'll show you the solutions next time, next video. Then we want to solve uh, addition and subtraction equations. I'll remind you, if you have a scale that is balanced, you can add the same number to both sides, you can subtract the same number from both sides, 
You can multiply one side by a number and the other side by the same number. You can divide one side by a number and divide the other side by the same number. Okay? Make sure this remains balanced. Think of a balance in equilibrium. Two, pound, two pounds of feathers weigh as much as two pounds of rocks. Gee, you have so the the uh, feathers are so much lighter than the rocks, and the two are equal. Isn't that amazing? Think about it. You have two pounds of rocks. You have two pounds of feathers. The scale is balanced. Add one pound of rocks here. This becomes unbalanced. Add one pound of rocks here, and not over there. This is unbalanced. Add one point here and one point here. This remains in equilibrium. If the left side is equal to the right side, then you can add any number you want to to both sides at the same time, and the scale will still remain balanced. You add 5 pounds to 8 pounds, you add 5 pounds to 8 pounds. 13 pounds equals 13 pounds. Similarly, you can remove the same number from both sides, and that's essentially what we are going to do by addition and subtraction. If we want to add something on one side, we also have to add on the other side. If we want to get rid of something on one side, we add it to both sides, something that has been subtracted. So if we, if we have added the same number to both sides, we can remove the same number from both sides and be left with just A plus B. Multiplication is repeated addition. Can you figure out the principles of multiplications, what that will lead to? That will be the next lesson, but can you try and think about this? Just like division, which is repeated subtraction, can you figure out what the principle of, of division might be? We are working with the principle of addition. We add the same number to both sides. With subtraction, we subtract the same number from both sides. So what about multiplication and what about division? We want to solve some elementary equations. Now you can look at this and you can see that 13 plus 7 is 20. But I want you to develop a mathematical way, not just guessing what the answer is. The idea is to have only x's on one side, no x's on the other side, and only x's by themselves, not x plus or minus a non-x term, like a constant. How can I get rid of that 7? Somebody put it there. I'll take it away. But I'll take it away from both sides of the equation. After I subtract 7 from here, that 7 is no longer here. The x is by itself. I subtract 7 from 20, that gives me 13. That's how I arrive at the 13 mathematically. Subtract 7 from both sides, no equal sign here. Draw the line, do your result. x plus 7 minus 7 is just x. 20 minus 7 is 13, x is 13. And the equal sign is to be in the same vertical position. That will help you greatly. Uh, the left side became just x. I'm giving you the explanation here. Is 13 the right answer? Well, plug in 13 in place of x. 13 plus 7 is indeed 20. How about solving this one? x minus 9 is 12. Somebody took away the 9. You put it back and it will drop out from here. Addition and subtraction undo each other. You want to undo the subtraction, you add 9. But you add 9 to both sides. You add 9 to both sides. So this will be just x. This will be 9 plus 12 or 21. Is it true that 12... Is it true... That x is 21. Is it true that 21, that should be 21, not 12, so is it true that 21 minus 9 is equal to uh, 12? I guess I turned that around and I made it 12 plus 9 is 21. Uh, you can do it that way. But I would have preferred 
x minus 9 plus 9, which is x. And then, oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm explaining what I do on the left. I'm explaining what I'm doing on the right. Now I'm checking to see if that's the right answer. So x was 21. x minus 9 is 12. Yes, 21 minus 9 is 12. Problem 3. 13.75 is equal to x plus 13.75. I have x only on one side, that's great. I want to have x by itself, not plus or minus, a non-x term. Somebody put this number down, I'll take it away from here and from the other side. So subtract 1350 from both sides. You started out originally with 13.75, which is x plus 1350. Now you're left with the x by itself. You subtract 1350 from 1375, that gives you 0 0.25. You may want to copy that quickly, or take a good look at it. If you are good at doing math quickly, you can go from here to here quickly. Don't use a calculator that defeats the purpose of this class. Okay, we can check it, it works out. X is by itself on one side, no X is on the other side, that's great. You want to get rid of the 2 over 5, you subtract 2 over 5 from both sides. And 2 over 5 is 0.4, that's a decimal, that's a decimal. You subtract 0.4 from both sides, X is 0.3. And you check it. I'll leave the checking to you. In number five, you have x minus two and four fifteenths, which is three and three over twenty. Convert this to a proper fraction, convert that to a proper fraction. That's one way of doing it. And uh, I simply added these two and then I take care of the, uh, the uh, mixed numbers. So I have, after I add 2 and 5 over 15, that drops out. You have x, which is the original 3 and 3 over 20, plus 2 and 4 over 15. I want the denominator to be the same, 60. I multiply by 3 over 3, I multiply by 4 over 4, and I add the 3 to the 2. That gives me 5, 3 plus 2 holes is 5 holes. 9 over 20 plus 16 over 20. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. Gives me 25 over 60. So 5 and 25 over 60, which is 5 and, 5 goes in here, 5 goes into 60 also. Factor out 5 over 5, which is 1. You get 5 and 5 over 12. You started with mixed numbers, give the answer as a mixed number. I have about 20 minutes left before my class, and I got about 35 minutes left to film, to make it an hour and a half. Okay, we can check this. We are supposed to get x, which is 5 and 5 twelfths, minus 2 and 15, 4 over 15, which is supposed to be 3 and 3 over 20. Multiply by 5 over 5 to get a denominator of 60. Multiply by 4 over 4 to get a denominator of 60. Multiply by 3 over 3 to get a denominator of 60. And uh, does it work out? 3 minus 0 is 3. 29 minus 16 is indeed 9 over 60. And I don't know why I didn't reduce that that was supposed to become 3 over 20. And originally, I guess I had 3 over 20 right here. So I've just shown that this is the solution. And 
then I wanted to solve x plus 2 plus 2, which is equal to x plus 6. x on both sides of the equation? Uh, I should have it only on one side. How can I get rid of the x on, on this side? I subtract, I take this x away. Somebody put it there, I take it away. So I take it away from both sides. And this leaves me with 0, and this leaves me with a 1. Oh, oh, 0 is equal to 1. Is that a true statement? No, it isn't. What is the solution to this equation? There is no solution, no matter what you replace x by. The left side will never become equal to the right side. There is no solution to this equation. Isn't that amazing? Let's do something that is almost like that. Instead of uh, 6, I'm doing a 5 here now. Instead of the original 6, I have a new problem that's a 5. x plus 2 plus 3 is equal to x plus 5. Remove the x from both sides. You are left with 5 minus 5. After that, you subtract 5 from both sides. You are left with 0 equals 0. That's a true statement. What value of x will make that a true statement? How about your birthday? What's your birthday plus 2 plus 3 and the same birthday plus 5? Isn't that the same number? So no matter what number you replace x by in this problem, the left side is always equal to the right side. What's the solution? Any number is a solution to this equation. So there are infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many, not infinity. Infinitely many, which means many, 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 many values of x. You could have decimals, you could have square roots, you could have pi, you could have your birthday, your mother's birthday, anybody else. And then, that was examples, now exercises. Solve x plus 9, which is 12 and then solve x minus 4, which is 12, and then solve 23.75, which is x plus 15.5. I'm going a little fast here. So 23.75, which is equal to x plus 15.5. And then solve x minus 1 quarter, which is 0.75. x minus 1 quarter is 0.75. And then solve x minus 4 and 5 twelfths, which is equal to 7 and 4 over 21. x minus 4 and 5 over 12 equals 7 and 4 over 21 which is x plus 66, x plus 22 plus 33, which is x plus 36. Exercise 7, the same left side, x plus 22 plus 33 is x plus 55. Okay? And uh, I'll give you... And we have chapter 17, which is solving multiplication and division equations. We want to do the basics. Again, we have the left side, which is equal to the right side. I could have 3 times 2 pounds here if I also have 3 times 2 pounds here. It doesn't matter whether you have rocks or whether you have feathers. You have to have a lot more feathers than rocks for the same amount. But regardless, the scale is balanced. The scale is in equilibrium. So whatever I have on the right or on the left, I can multiply by the same number. I had two pounds here, two pounds here, multiply by three, six pounds here, six pounds here. If on the other hand I have six pounds here and six pounds here, I can divide both sides by the same number like three and I'll be left with two pounds, which is equal to two pounds. I'm saying that in words here, and I trust this makes sense. You can read that for a little moment if you want to. So triple the pounds of rocks on the left and triple the pounds on the right. 
the scale is still balanced, it's still in equilibrium. Does that make sense? Can you think of a scale that is balanced? Okay. This illustrates the principle of equation multiplication. Previously, we had the principle of addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction undo each other. If somebody adds two, you can undo it by subtracting two. If somebody subtracts two, you can reverse that by adding two. If somebody multiplies a side by two, you can divide by two to undo it. Or if somebody divides a side by a number like three, you can undo that by multiplying by three. Addition and multiplication undo each other. Addition and subtraction undo each other. Multiplication and division undo each other. You cannot undo multiplication by additional subtraction, only by division. If A is equal to B, then A times C is equal to B times C. If 2 equals 2, 3 times 2 equals 3 times 2. If you had A times C equals B times C, you can divide both sides by C and be left with A equals B, provided C is not equal to 0. Why is that? Why can't C be 0? Because you're dividing by C and you cannot divide by 0. You cannot have a zero in the denominator of a fraction as a factor. I said that a few times already. It is very difficult for people to remember this the right way. We solve an equation specifically. Again, you can look at them. You can see what is the number that is needed here. Seven times what number is 21? You can certainly see that seven times three is 21. But again, the object here is not to find the number, but to develop a technique to do this algebraically. So how can you get x? You only have an x by itself on one side, only the constants on the other side. How do you undo the multiplication of the 7? By division. You divide both sides by 7. So you have 7x over 7, which is 21 over 7. What is 7 over 7? It is 1. What is 1 times x? Just x. So x is equal to 3, just like we could do by guessing. Again, the object is not to get the answer, but the object is to develop an algebraic technique to develop the answer. So given 7x over 21, we could, could we have subtracted 7 from both sides, given 7x is 21? I can already hear some people say, no, you cannot subtract 7. But if that is correct, I was lying to you last, uh, the previous chapter, because I, can, I said you can subtract the same number from both sides. So can you subtract 7 from both sides? Yes. Should you subtract 7 from both sides? Definitely not, because that's not the way to get rid of the 7. You can subtract 7 from both sides, but that will make matters worse. You must divide by 7 to get to the x. OK, that's what I'm saying here. What about this one? How do you solve 42x, which is 21? I guess we can divide both sides by 42. 42 over 42 is 1. 21 over 42 is what? Yeah, you're right, 1 over 2. 42x is 21. 42 over 42 is 1. 21 over 41 is 1 half. x is 1 half. How's that? Okay. And then you can check that out. So you have 42 times 1 half, which is 21. Note that we removed a number uh, multiplied by the unknown, which is a variable, by dividing the number, both sides, and uh, multiplication and division are opposite operation. One undoes what the other one has done. How about solving 30.74, which is equal to 2 thirds of x? We have only x's on one side, which is great. We have only constants on the other side. We have only one x term on one side, only one term on the other side. Somebody multiplied 2 thirds by x. I want to get rid of that. I'll divide both sides by 2 over 3. 
But dividing by 2 over 3 is the same as multiplying by 3 over 2. So multiply this side by 3 over 2, multiply that side by 3 over 2. What's 3 over 2 times 2 over 3? When we associate these two factors, it is 1. That's what I wanted. What is 1 times x? And if this is correct, the answer is 20.61. You want to take a look at that quickly? Maybe take it down and check it out later? You can write x on the left side or on the right side. Why? Because if this is x, you can turn around this way and x will be on that side. So if I say x is 20, it's the same as saying 20 is equal to x. We have essentially the same type of problem here. We have 2 fifths of x, which is 0.6. I guess I could make that 4 tenths. I guess I didn't. I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of, five, of 2 over 5, which is 5 over 2. 5 over 2 times the original 2 over 5x. 5 over 2 times the original 0 0.6. And uh, 2 goes in here, 3. 2 goes in here uh, so that this is left as 0.3. And 0.3 times 5 is 1.5. And dividing both sides by 2 over 5 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. I've already stated that. I check and it works out. How about solving 2 and 4 fifteenths x, which is equal to 3 and 3 twentieths? What's the best way of doing this? Converting the mixed number to an improper fraction. Converting this mixed number to an improper fraction. How do you do that? Uh, this is 2 and 4 over 15. This is like 2 times 15, 30 plus 4, 34 over 15. This is 20 times 3 or 60 plus 3, 63 over 20 and then multiply by the reciprocal of the improper fraction, both sides, and get your answer. So 34 over 15x, which is 63 over 20. Multiply both sides by 15 over 34. That will drop out. The fraction will drop out on this side. And you get your original 63 over 20 times the reciprocal 15 over 34. Can you reduce? 5 goes here 3 times, 5 here 4 times. And I think that's about it. This is 2 times 17, which is not in the numerator. So my answer is 189 over 136, which I transform to a mixed number because I started out with mixed numbers. Otherwise, I'd be happy with the result that way. And you want to check. And when you check, it works out. You can write down the numbers if you want to. Then, as example number six, we have a number of adults and three children, so we don't know how many adults, but we know three children, went to a movie. The admission of an adult was $12.50, and that of a child was $4.25. The total price of admission for the, the uh, three children and the adults the total price was $100.25. How many adults went to this movie? Ooh, how can we find out? Well, I know how many adults went. The number is in an Xbox. So write down what I call the preamble. I want to make out a uh, symbol for everything that I need. So the number is X. There are X adults and three children. And the price of admission for the adults only 
was the number of adults, which is x times 1250, and the, the price for the children was 3 times 425. And when you add all of these, you get 125. That's the algebraic way. The reasoning way would be to multiply 3 by 425, subtract from this, and divide the result by 1250. But we want to develop this algebraically. Okay? I repeat, we want to develop this algebraically. It's more important to get how to find the solution rather than get the answer. Okay. In a word problem, we always know the answer to the question in the problem. X is the answer to whatever we are looking for, and sometimes we change that to make it uh, more convenient. So let X be the number of adults. The number is locked in the X box. The total cost of admission was the cost of the children plus the cost of the adults. The cost of the children was three times, there are three children, 4.25, that's the price per child, and 12.50 times X. 12.50 for one adult, 12.50 for the second, 12.50 for all the adults, so 12.50 times X. And that is equal to 12.75 plus 12.50 X. I worked this out, that gave me 12.75. And then I think I'm ready for my equation. So that's the cost of admission. The cost of admission is equal to the cost of admission. That sounds a little strange. Certainly the cost of admission is equal to the cost of admission. So why do I write that? Why don't I say the moon is equal to the moon? Why? Because I have two ways of writing cost of admission. One way I worked out right here step by step. Another way, I was given as uh, $100 and uh, 25 cents. That was given to me. The total cost of admission for the adults and the children was that number. This is my equation which I need to solve. Do I have only x's on one side? Yes, that's wonderful. Do I have only x's by themselves, not x's plus or minus a constant? No. So my object is to subtract 1250 from 1275 from both sides. 1275 not from this, but from that. Okay. This should really be over here. And uh, this is in the proper place. I do a constant minus a constant. Not a constant from a variable. So when I subtract 1275, this 1275 and that 1275 drop out. Number minus the same number. I just get 1250 on one side, 1250 times x, 125 on the other side. 1250x, I want to divide by 1250 on this side and by 1250 on that side, and I get 7. So there were 7 adults. Does that seem to make sense? 7 adults join 3 children to this movie. And uh, you can check you can multiply 7 times 1250 and add to 3 times 425 and that better give you $100.25. You get an idea of the flavor of algebra. You may not sense the usefulness of algebra yet, but uh, someday you will, hopefully. I hope you can learn this and use it in good standing. This is an introductory course. This is a good introduction to algebra. It's a little bit deep at the beginning, but uh, s stay with it. Don't give up. What value of the unknown will make this particular fraction undefined? What is undefined again? Was it zero is undefined? Oh no. If zero were undefined, I wish that was the case on a test. If I got a zero, I wish I didn't know what it meant, but unfortunately I do. So zero in the denominator would make this undefined. Zero in the numerator is okay. Zero for the entire denominator. 
So this fraction is undefined. If I take 5x, subtract 6 from it, and I get 0. So when I take 5x minus 6 and make it 0, I find 5x, which is 6. I add 6 to both sides. 6 drops out here. And then I divide both sides by 6, because division undoes the multiplication 5 times x. So the result is 6 over 5. If x is 6 over 5, the denominator is 0. The fraction is undefined. So a division by zero is undefined. Will you ever make use of that? I got paid for something like 16 years for looking like division by zero. It was very, very critical that we don't have a uh, program in which we allow zero to be a factor in the denominator. Imagine you have software that protects your medical or financial well-being. It contains lots of mathematical operations, including divisions. The software will either quit, that means stop running, or it will get caught in an infinite loop. It doesn't know how to stop. If you permit division by zero, so what do you do when you have a division by a number? You test the number before the division. If the number is not zero, you go ahead and divide. If the number is equal to zero, either you send a message to the operator and you stop on purpose so that it can be fixed, or you have a workaround. You go back and you make sure that, that whatever leads to zero will not happen. You fix it before you allow division by zero. If you want to become a computer programmer, uh, uh, then this will be part of what you need to be aware of. Also, please note that division by zero is undefined. Sometimes a student claims that if zero is undefined, you may wish it was so on a test if you get a zero, but it isn't. I already made that joke, maybe twice. And then we are ready to let you have exercises. OK. I'm going to show you the exercises for about 12 minutes. I have to lengthen this out. So the first problem, we want to solve 12x, which is equal to 12. And you can see the solution, can't you? x is, uh, well, I won't tell you what. You want to use a multiplication and division principle. Could you use the addition subtraction principle? Could you subtract 12 from both sides and get an answer? Well, first let me repeat the question. Could you subtract 12 from both sides? The answer is yes. We already said you can add or subtract the same number to both sides. But subtracting 12 from this multiplication problem will not get rid of the 12, because only division undoes multiplication. So can you subtract 12? Yes, but don't do it. You'll be in trouble. So I, want, I, I don't want to tell you how to do it. It's, um, it's an exercise for you to do. I already said too much. Then, in the next example, we want to solve 1 half x minus 5, which is 21. 1 half x minus 5 is 21. Any idea of, on what you might be tempted to do here? I wish I had only x's on one side. I'm there. There are only x's on one side. I wish I had only x's by themselves, not plus or minus something. Well, there's minus 5, which I need to get rid of. And then I have 1 half x, which is some number. And um, how do I get rid of the 1 half? Hmm. This is chapter 17. We are almost halfway through the class. This is video 6, I think. They are told of 13 videos. Well, whatever you have to do, you should come up with an answer. And then you wanted to solve 34.2, which is 3 over 4x. 
That sounds pretty simple also. Okay. And then, could you turn this around? Could you say 3 over 4x is equal to 34.2? Does it matter whether the answer to x is on the right side or the left side? If you don't know the answer, maybe ask somebody who knows. Send me an email if you want to. How are we doing so far in the class? How are you making out with these videos? If only you had this in printed form, you'd be a lot better off. How about solving 3 over 5x, which is equal to 0.6? Again, that's not so bad. And then, so 3 over 5 times the unknown is equal to 0.6. Okay. Move on to the next exercise. 2 and 4 over 15x is equal to 1 and 7 over 20. Do you suppose... No, I'm going to give it away. We have only one x term, which is wonderful. We have only one constant on the other side by themselves. That's great. That's a pretty simple problem if you know how to work with mixed numbers. Yeah, mixed numbers. Then, oh, we are going, instead of going to a movie, we are going to a concert. A total of 10 adults and children. Now we know how many adults, but I don't think we know the number of children. So, a total of 10 adults and children went to a concert. The admission of an adult was 1250, the admission for a child was 425. The total price of admission was $92 for all the children and all the adults. How many adults and how many children could have gone to the concert? Could have gone? Is there more than one possibility? Probably. Except that if I have 10 adults, the price is fixed. So I guess there's probably only one way of an answering the number of children. If the price of adults was not fixed, you could have different combinations. But I'm making... Oh, how do we read this problem? Is it 10 adults, and in addition to that we have children? Or is it a total of 10, and of these 10 we have adults and children? I think that's probably the way I made it up. The total number of both children and adults is 10. So how many adults and how many children could go? And there are different combinations. Okay? Maybe you have one adult and so many children. Maybe you have two adults and a few less children. Maybe you have three adults and still less children. Maybe there's a definite way that you come up with exactly 92. Or maybe of the various combinations, there's only one that gives you exactly 92. Play with it and see. This looks like a more interesting type of problem. There may be more than one answer here. What value of the unknown, what value of the unknown, the, unval the unknown is in the Xbox. Remember the Xbox? There's a number in here and you want to find out what that number is. You want to unlock that. So what value of the unknown, this is the unknown, it's a variable, will make the fraction undefined? And again, how do we make this undefined? Can I have an answer? How about you? Would you like to answer? I'm sorry, would you repeat that? Yeah, you're right. Did you hear that? Okay. Oh, I want to leave this to you as an exercise, so I wish I had not asked you and let everybody else find out what X is.
in order for this to be undefined. Okay, we have about two minutes left. Make sure you can do the solutions. If you run into trouble, by all means, look at the solution, but redo the problem until you can do the problem without going back to either your notes, your book, or the video, or uh, the uh, <coughs> answer in, in a printed form. Again, I can send you the answer. Make a request by getting in touch with H Finer, H F E I N E R, at coastline.edu. Let me know that uh, you are in the class with my videos. That's uh, basic mathematics, Math C005. And you would like me to send you an email with an attachment and all of these uh, PDFs, all of the printed material will be in the attachment or attachments and you can print it yourself. Okay, see what you can do with all of this and in the next video I'll give you the answers.